Welcome to Church of the Chair, where we don't trust self-starting cars. I'm your host, E, and today we're talking about one truly mean ride-or-die chick. If you're new around here, you need to expect spoilers for all of Stephen King's work. I can't do this series without spoiling all of his books. So if you haven't read every single one of his books, I suggest you click away now. You've been warned. Today, we're talking about Christine by Stephen King. If you don't know, in this series, I try to tie everything in of every single one of Stephen King's books back to both the Dark Tower and the Stephen King universe in general. So right off the bat, we're going to talk about the Prim. When Gon created Midworld, the Dark Tower sprang from his belly button and pushed the outside world away. That outside world it's called the Prim. That's where all the demons or evil entities in Stephen King's books come from. From lowly demons like the succubus in at the beginning of The Wastelands all the way up to Pennywise and creatures like the Outsider. That's important for this video because that's how I'm going to tie Christine back into the Dark Tower. It is mentioned in From a Buick 8 and Stephen King has verified this that the creatures that come out of the Buick in From a Buick 8 are Dark Tower related. What I believe is that these cars, all these cars that Stephen King writes about that come alive are actually shape-shifting demons just like Pennywise. You have the car from From a Buick 8, you have Christine, you have the car from Mile 81, and you even have the Wraith from NOS 4A2 by King's son, Joe Hill. But what I failed to do in the original video for Christine was tell you how Christine ties in to the rest of Stephen King's universe. But this user has got us covered. You can pause to read. I forgot all about these references in The Stand and It, and I'm very thankful to this commenter for bringing it up. One final word on the text itself. I far, far, far prefer John Carpenter's movie adaptation to Stephen King's book. I say this because I feel like John Carpenter had a finger on the pulse of what people wanted, and he excised all the parts in the book that I feel held no purpose whatsoever. Now, I'm not one of those people to say that Stephen King overwrites all the time. I feel like most of his overriding or what people consider to be overriding is just more of the storyteller in him coming out. To me there is nothing better than sitting back and listen to Stephen King tell me a story within a story or just basic background information about characters. But with this one, I I actually think this one's kind of overwritten. And my evidence for that is how amazing John Carpenter's adaptation is. And I also find it kind of funny that this book is dedicated to George Romero, but John Carpenter got the gig to do the adaptation. But that's all the time I have for you today. If I missed anything, if you have any corrections, or you'd like to provide your own theories down there in the comments section, please do. But until next time, all hail the chair. What the hell was that accent?